We have to bring in four left-wing Zionist Jews on the space, and that's not good enough. Then we got to bring in Destiny, who for years has been saying, for whatever stupid reason he can say, well, I'm not going to stream with him, but he is going to show up on this one when it's a big platform. And that just goes to show the disadvantage that people like myself have. You know, Destiny is on YouTube, he's on Reddit, he's on Discord, he's on Twitter. Despite saying equally awful things, jokes or not, he's engaged in mass reporting like anybody has, whether it's a year ago or seven years ago. But a person like me, I've been banned from everything. I've been lied about by everybody, lied about by the ADL, SPLC. They've never written anything about Destiny. There's no pressure to get him banned from anything. I get restored. It's not 48 hours. I get invited onto a space where everybody practically has to sign a pledge that says, I'm not with this guy. And we got to bring in four other people who do most of the talking from the left to wait, defend wait, the State wait a Department wait and wait the regime. Wait and now I'm going to interrupt you here. Now I'm going to interrupt Yeah, here. Brian, I'll give you, Brian, I'll let you respond right after, Nick. Uh, sorry, Brian. The reason they try to silence him so much is because his position ultimately is that we should stop funding Israel. It's that simple. That, that's why he's so censored is because he wants, he points out a very specific flaw that American politicians have, is that they all have to have an undying allegiance to Israel. And we don't even know why they're our greatest ally. People defend this country so much and they don't even know where it is on a map. The fact that he calls this out so much, is that's what bothers him. And so they try to blacklist him, they try to censor him nonstop. But every time he gets a new angle of popularity, when people start to admit that his talking points have been correct for so long, they immediately hijack the stream. They'll come in there when he comes on Fresh and Fit, Destiny has to debate him. When I go debate uh, XQC, Destiny has to jump in. When Nick gets reinstated on Twitter for the first day and surpasses him in followers in 24 hours, who needs to come in? Can any of you even banned from Twitter and all other social media companies. Uh, Keith, Brian, and then obviously Nick, you're probably best to answer that question. Well, it's obviously ideological censorship. I mean, getting back to what I was saying earlier, you know, Destiny can make these uh, pro-genocide statements, Hassan can endorse violence, nothing happens, they stay up on YouTube, there isn't an SPLC hit piece. There are teams employed by organizations like the ADL that sit and watch every minute of Nick's content. And he does five shows a week, so it's like, you know, 10 to 15 hours of content. And they clip out one or two minutes, often joking clips, and then they shop that around. And that's really the only way he's allowed on these major platforms. Um, you know, Nick, I was with him a few days ago, he was telling me about the, the extent of the censorship uh, after January 6th, and, and really, you know, I think it's a watershed him being allowed back on because people get censored and we all know how bad the censorship has been the last year. But there was a point where, you know, you get censored on a platform, you move to another platform, maybe that one bans you. But in Nick's case, I think he's one of the few people where it was an individual censor. You know, it was an unpersoning across platforms where even people that were posting his clips would get censored. If you search for him on YouTube, it was only very curated results from organizations like the SPLC. And like, it's easy to come on and take this kind of, like I said, this sort of naive pluralist attitude that it's just a free market and, and these companies just don't like these individual beliefs. But at the end of the day, you know, the companies aren't monitoring these individual streamers, these individual personalities. These boycotts are targeted and led by organizations like the ADL that, that forced Facebook to ban Holocaust denial, forced Facebook to ban white nationalism, launched a huge advertiser boycott on Twitter. And, you know, this isn't just some kind of organic thing where these organizations represent like a plurality of interests. It's oftentimes the same oligarchs funding these people that are funding the media. Jonathan Greenblatt was, was in the Obama administration. These organizations are really an extension of the regime. And to take this kind of naive attitude that this is just sort of civil society functioning as it does, and it's, it's you know, free market making decisions about who to sponsor, it's just totally naive. So that's why I think it's such a... That's Let why me, I think I, it's a watershed moment that Nick is back on, because I think he has become the litmus test as someone who is, you know, the most attacked by these organizations, the most lied about. And he's really the only one that's come out the other side of censorship bigger than before. You know, individuals like Alex Jones have been heavily censored, uh, Andrew Tate. But Nick has really come back bigger than three, four years ago. And it's at the point where, despite all the censorship, I think everyone has to recognize he's a part of the public conversation. You know, Piers Morgan regularly well, drops him. People ask, mention his meeting ask. with Trump. So, you know, Eli actually, there's a virtue in hatred. There's a virtue in hating the Palestinians or hating Hamas and things like that. And so, like, that does reflect a fundamental difference of values. And when I say, and, and Christians believe that evil is the Antichrist. The essence of, of good and God and love is selflessness. The opposite of that is selfishness, pride. 
So our adversary is not actually Hitler, it's the devil. It's the Antichrist. And the uh, the model of good is God. It seems like there's this parallel, separate moral system that's been created where, in, in some people's minds, Hitler is the devil. And, so, and I guess Israel is the angel or something. Like, that seems to be the people that are the most evil are the ones that are the most like Hitler. And the goodest people, the best people, the most good, well, they're the ones that are the least racist, the least this. I think that's like a, an obfuscation. I think that obfuscates the fundamental moral equation for Christians. So when I so say, then, and when me and Ye so said just that, ask you a question just, on that. I, 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 I do want to go to, just, uh, 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 let, let me, let me get Brian to push back. So let me, let me ask you a question, right? It's going to be a one word answer. Uh, based on the, what you said, because uh, you're basically applying Christian ethics, but let's say hypothetically someone was to kill your family member, would you ha apply the same standard that you would dislike the person but still love them? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're supposed to love everybody. That's why that priest in Australia who got stabbed immediately prayed for the attacker. Um, so that that is really the fundamental difference. Brian, and that's the difference. So, uh, that's I, 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 